we're going to be talking about method overloading in Java, by the way. Okay, so methods. There are three main things you can do with them. You can overload them. You can override them. And recursion. Three things you can do with methods. I've not talked about inheritance, so this will be another video. This will come soon, and this is this video. Okay, sounds good. So, you'll often see this, static polymorphism. or compile time. Polymorphism. Those are two other words you can call it. I will not call those since I have not covered polymorphism. You will never hear me say those until we cover polymorphism. So you'll hear other people say them, but you'll not hear me say them. And that is a breakdown. Let's recap before we start our, our lesson for the video. And then after that, we can hop onto Eclipse and we can solve a problem that has been created for this video. So let's review methods. A block of code that only runs when called. And that is a method. One of the most notable methods, public static void string array arcs. Oh, the main, the main method, string array arcs, main. Sometimes I'm just writing too fast and I don't even notice what I'm writing. Just try and get this. There we go. Okay, probably should have slowed it down. It is a mouthful to say. Public static void managing array errors. And that's just how Java is. So let's break down the parts of the method. In case you don't know, public static void mainstream array args is a method. It is present in every Java program because once you run a Java program, this is called first. So let's break it down. The parts of a method. You have your modifiers. Your return type. Your method name and your arguments. In English, this method means that it's public, it's accessible among all packages, it's static, you do not have to create an instance of the class or an object, void, it does not return a value, it's a named main, and it will take in a string array of arguments. That is what this means in English. So this part is our modifiers. I'm not talking about modifiers, so do not worry about that. This is our return type. When a method is void, it will not return a value, and it will use dot print and dot print line. If the method has a return type, then you're going to use the keyword return. And that's if it has a return type. Whenever you return something in a method, it stops executing. It's done. Main, your method name, can be whatever you want. Java avoids spaces, does not allow it. So camel case is your best option if you have multiple words, like my method. That's camel case. And then your arguments. These are optional. You do not have to have them. You may have them if you want to. You may not have them. Just depends on how it is in your program. And that is it. That is the breakdown of methods. Okay. So let's erase that and get on to our main topic, method overloading. Two methods 
or more methods, I should say. Same name, different arguments. Later we're going to get into method overriding, which is when the methods have the same name and the same arguments. That is another video. I'm not covered inheritance, so we're going to hold that one off because that one deals with inheritance to some extent. So method overloading, two or more methods, same name, different arguments. So let's name a method. We're going to make it void. We're going to take an, an integer of x and an integer of y. We're going to return. Oh, we can't. My bad. Apologies for that. We're just going to add x and y. Note that we cannot use return because the method is void, and void means the method will not have a return value. So, that is our first method. Now we have our second method. This method has a double of x and a double of y. That's an asterisk, by the way. Okay, we have two different methods. Same name, different parameters. So, which one does Java choose to run? Well, that solely depends on the parameter you pass in. If we pass in a five and a three, Java will do this method because its arguments correspond. If you pass in a 3.14 and a 2.72, Java's gonna do this method because it matches its arguments. Remember when you're passing something into your method, you're passing in the arguments into it. So this is gonna to calculate to become eight, and this, I don't even wanna do the math, just math. You can do that on your own if you want to. Okay, and that is method overloading. Now, let's go to Eclipse and solve the problem that is there for us. Okay, so we're back in Eclipse, and here in this what we have to do here is we have a program and it's asking us that we should write a program that will reverse Rudy's favorite number 24 along with his own name. So to accomplish this task, we can overload a method. So let's do that. Let's make a method called reverse that will have a return type of an integer. And then we can also have another method that will return a string that's also called reverse. Looks good to me. Okay. And what this is going to do, it's going to take in an integer of n. And this one, let's take a string of str. Looks good to me. The next thing that we need to do is we have to actually do the reversing. We need our program to actually reverse the number. So to do this, we can just simply use a while loop for the integer and a for loop for a string. I find it easier, you can do recursion on this, but I've not taught recursion, so I'm not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna use a while loop. Do it iteratively instead of recursively. So we're gonna make an integer, we're gonna call it reversed. What this is going to do, it's going to actually reverse the number. And we're going to do a while loop that's going to keep on reversing the digits. So while n does not equal 0, we're going to make reverse. We're going to make it times equals 10. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to equal it to percent 10. We're going to modulo it. That way, it returns the last digit. Then, we're just going to divide that by 10, which will give us the remainder of the reverse number. And then, we can just return 
are reversed. And there we go. Now for string, it's gonna look, it's gonna work a little bit differently. We can use a for loop instead of a while loop to do this task. So we're gonna make an answer. We're gonna make it empty. We're gonna make it an empty string. Then the next thing we can do is we can do a for loop. So we're gonna start it at the end of the string. So let's say for example we have Rudy, right? Our result is gonna be wide year, right? So what we have to do to accomplish this task is that we have to start with our str.length minus one. And str.length minus one is our y. Then we have to go all the way to zero, which is r, which is your first letter. So that's r. And then we have to decrement it each time. Because once we finish our Y and it's printed, then we have to do our D and so on and so forth. Then the next thing that we can do is we can add on our answer to str.substring i i plus 1. So what the substring does is that it starts with i in this case. So it starts with i. It's going to go all the way to i plus 1. So if i is 0, it's going to start at 0, but it's not going to include 1. So it's just going to print R in this case. Hopefully that made some sense. If it didn't, be sure to leave a comment and I'll be able to answer it. So we start with str.length minus 1, which is Y, right? Because that's str.length minus 1. Because that 4 minus 1 is 3 and the Y is the third index. So we start at index 3. And then we want to print 3, 4. However, 4 isn't in included. It's just three, so it's just gonna print Y. And it's gonna add that on to our empty string. So now we have Y left. So then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decrement it one. So since I was three, I is now two. And it's gonna print two, three. It's not gonna include the three though. So it's just gonna be D. And then it adds that on and it keeps on going in a loop like that. So then we just have to return our result. We have to return our answer. And now, we have to pass in our parameters. Since it says we want to reverse Rudy's favorite number 24, what we have to do is we have to revert is we have to make a method call, which is 24. And then we have to do the same thing with his name. Reverse Rudy. Remember it's a string, so we have to put it in quotes. Done. Run it. We're done. We have done the task. It has reversed 24 to 42, and we have reversed Rudy to wider. And that's pretty much it. So remember that when in method overloading, like in our demo with the whiteboard, if you don't, in case you forgot, which I hope you didn't, what Java does, it decides which method to run based on the parameters you put in. Since since you passed in, since we passed into 24, and 24 matches our parameter for our first method that returns an integer, it's going to do this. Since we pass in a string, which is this method, Java does this. So hopefully that made some sense. If not, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. And that's pretty much it. With that being said, I'll see you all next time.